love this website crypto bubbles kind of puts things into a unique perspective and you can also like mess around with them too that's kind of fun look into Bitcoin we've got some great charts in here I don't know if anybody uh, you probably all know this already but hey here it is in case you don't know it good resources I think so all right we're gonna turn this into an oscillator and uh, first I'm going to remove it from up here so we don't get confused I'm going to remove this and I'll uncomment so I'm gonna import uh, the price of Bitcoin um, as uh, BTC and since I'm getting a price of Bitcoin currently by dividing um, you know two markets at a time and plotting it what I can do is I can take the price that Bitcoin actually is that I've put into BTC now and just simply subtract it like I you know I hope you didn't expect me to work on that for a while because that's <laughs> that's all you got to do really um, and the rest is taken care of I believe so if we do that uh, and we save it we're gonna save this as because uh, this is not true no more when it says and we'll just call this OSC and save that and now we can add to chart and let's see see we can see now we've got uh, not Bitcoin prices over here we've got 0 50 and negative boom there it is all right and uh, what I noticed is we tend to uh, pass through zero stay relatively within the negative 40 and, and positive 40 that maybe is like one standard deviation you could call that and then 60 and 60 would be another 80 and 80 would be another because uh, it, it rarely does get outside of a hundred um, when it deviates like that but this is what the oscillation pattern looks like and now this tells a different kind of story um, but you know unfortunately without looking at this for a while you know we can start making up stories here and then go back here and oh my gosh well okay that doesn't hold and what's going on it gets pretty confusing but uh, hopefully with a couple more eyes on this um, maybe uh, we'll see what it leads to so we're again we're at the one minute on bitstamp and uh, these values are oscillating uh, we've got uh, the legend down here again bcash is green xrp is yellow ethereum's red and litecoin is blue and uh, we are now taking the derived value you can get through uh, these conversions over here taking the derived value you know, for these two to get a price of Bitcoin and instead of doing this overlay plot we are now doing this kind of thing we're taking we're taking a derived price from each of these markets that derived price all four of them there's a four derived prices from here uh, go here and we're subtracting each one from the actual price of Bitcoin and gives us the difference value and that difference is being plotted right here so I hope that's clear for everybody um, I want to add a uh, horizontal line here and to do that I can let's see we can add that right in here uh, we've opened up some space here so what I want to do first is like since I know zero they're crossing through zero and I want to put a like a dotted line you know across zero so I can see zero pretty clearly so we're gonna do show H line and we're gonna set that equal to let's see let's do input true and we're then gonna say all right H line at zero oops and color is going to equal we have to do show h line question mark that's that's weird but we do have to do that um, and then let's see I think it's just yeah nope dang it I always forget how many I'm doing let's see one two three four five six seven eight thank you jeez gotta count that out sometimes okay that should give us an h line save let's see and there's our there's our H line and data it has to generate it's thinking about it all right so now we can see zero a lot more clear um, now the reason I popped the stochastic RSI in here I do use it on a regular basis but I also like the way that um, that it does this purple fill between these two bands and if you ever want to know what these are made of you can easily like go to open 
And you can even search for RSI in here. I mean, this is just my list of stuff, but like you can you can easily like, okay, new, here it is. And you can pull up any of the indicators uh, that they use on here and see how they generated this, provided that you know, you're know you a little bit familiar with PineScript or programming and you have the documentation you can look through. Um, that makes it really cool. So I just pulled that up to see how they did it. And here's what it looks like. So I ended up using uh, variable band one, like they do, which is H line. And I set mine to negative 40, like I said, that's like one deviation. Um, and then band two would be um, positive 40. I mean, you, I, I guess I should have put them in the positive, should be on top, but you know, whatever. Um, like that. And then you have to call fill to do this band one comma band let's see zero and then color is going to be oh i'm sorry i put two here i didn't mean to do that zero yep not zero two and not band either cool color is going to equal color i like the purple that they did there so dot purple dot purple and then you have to set the transparency because it's see-through otherwise you're going to get a not so see-through window set it to 90 like they do with the rsi put that back and now that should generate uh exactly this kind of uh, color band um but through the um these two values instead of what they have it at here which i believe is like 20 and 80. so let's save and it should auto update look at that waiting for data boom there we go okay now we can zoom in and we can see when uh, when we're getting outside of the 40 Bitcoin cash loves to go outside there's Bart Simpson's everywhere <laughs> so I guess we could try to see let's see if it corresponded to any kind of movement we had this drop from 73 to 72 that's hundred dollars roughly right yeah something like that but uh, again down here it's looking like it's uh, spaghettified I don't know how uh, I would have traded you know this move you know knowing like if we're looking at it here you know yeah they're trending closer to zero that's for sure and they all start to kind of mirror each other for sure but you know, and then there's this this right here where they all got really close to zero. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but then they started to diverge as the RSI was uh, over bought for a little while, uh, it looks like, and uh, then we crashed like a little bit. Uh, and I don't know how you would have picked up that from looking at this. So let's try a different time frame. Let's go to the day and see what that looks like, the other end of this extreme. Probably the week too, I haven't looked at the week. See what that tells us about this movement here. Well, that's weird. Look at that. Bitcoin Cash like did some freakouts while everything else stayed relatively close to zero. That's interesting. And uh, let's see. Let's let's go back to some interesting times. Where are we at here? Yeah, here was that high of uh, nineteen thousand two hundred, and that looks like that's when the data started for Bitcoin Cash here. So yeah, naturally, getting some spikes out there. Relatively quiet in here, unless you zoom in quite a bit. So that's interesting. Let's uh, let's go to the weekly and uh, zoom way out and see what that looks like. All right, let's take a look at the uh, weekly. You can see what that looks like. We are on a different day, apologies. My microphone decided that it uh, didn't want to pick up the rest of that video, so uh, this is the next day, and we just had a little bit of a, of a run-up, like a couple hundred dollars worth um, of on Bitcoin. So we'll see what that looks like on the minute. But uh, just so you can see, here's what the weekly looks like. Drop the Pine script down. Um, as expected, yeah, things got really spiky during the uh, all-time high run-up. And then uh, much more spiky, well, actually much less spiky, but still spiky uh, during the January um, or July of 2019 run-up. And... Yeah, you know, right here you can see it's relatively quiet. This was the low, relatively quiet. Everybody was trailing close to zero on a weekly time frame. Um, remember, these are calculating closing values of all these candles, so it's, it's still very uh, jagged. Um, 
going to have to do something to smooth that out. But let's take a look at the minute timeline and let's look at our run up from today. So we are, let's see, January 6th. January 6th, yeah, that's all January 6th. Where did we come from today? There we go. All right, so we remember that happening. Riding that. So sometimes it seems, and this is just an idea, that when they all get close to zero, especially when they all like cross over zero and nearly the same time with each other, that does look like it's tradable because there's a rise coming soon. But I'm not quite sure. This looks interesting over here, but by this time here, I mean, this breakout was already happening. Granted, it could go higher, so uh, let's see, what was this bottom? 75. 75 was looking like a good uh, resistance, but uh, now it's, it's more than likely going to be some support line. So this XRP bump right here was the both XRP markets during this time were trending downwards. Uh, it was not by much. It was by a fraction of some cents because XRP trades for such a little amount right now. But it's interesting that this line was going up and getting way out of the uh, the bounds of, of uh, normal um, difference values while both of those markets were going down and Bitcoin was, was trying to break out. Trying to break out. Not by much, though. So something to keep in mind. Getting pretty jagged in here. That's a unique pattern. And it's, it's like, let me see, I thought I found one. Like over here, in other words, if I can zoom in far enough, see how they all kind of, they were, they were doing kind of diverging here, XRP froke out, and then we come down and we, they all kind of come back up and hit zero right there, hey, which is interesting. And so we go up here and 75.64, it would have been a good time to buy and then wait for uh, right about 7,700, 7,730. Would have been nice, but uh, I don't know. Only time will tell. So in future versions, what I want to do is um, I'm going to add open opening to this too because that would help smooth these lines out. And one of the other ideas I have that ended up with me writing a web scraping application in Python to record trade history data from exchanges, um, I, I wanted to use that data, that timestamp, um, and use every trade value instead of the current market value. There, there is, of course, relation to those numbers, but um, they'll give you different values at different times. Most of the time, I think they'll give you the same number, but it would be interesting to add that in. And not only that, but then create some kind of weighted um, volume average to then factor in as well. Uh, and so we'll talk about that in a uh, future video.